Hi, everybody. My name is Matt Brown, and welcome to Tap Into the Future with Halo Dot. With me in the studio is Craig LePan and Pierre Orel. Welcome back to the studio, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Matt. Good to be here. So, guys, if you haven't been uh, following uh, Halo Dot, today is really going to blow your mind in terms of what these guys are doing from a technology perspective and really transforming the future of payments. But, Craig, I'd rather hear it from the horse's mouth here. <laughs> Why don't you give us the elevator pitch? Who are you, and what exactly is Halo Dot trying to do? Sure, Matt. So, yeah, so it's Craig LePan uh, looking after business development for Halo Dot. And yeah, Halo Dot's really doing one of those exciting things in mobile, you know, mobile payments, mobile apps, where you're taking something that was so physical, i.e., your good old speed point machine. You know, no one, everyone's familiar with that. So, really taking that, that speed point machine and dem- dematerializing it. What does that mean? It means we're taking a tiny part of the actual hardware needed and utilizing that in a, in a mobile phone. And that today is Android typically, but iOS will come. But yeah, we're taking something that you really needed special, expensive, dedicated hardware for and just converting that into a digital app on a, on a mobile phone so that many, many more players can get paid. And that's our message, you know, game changer, sell maker. So suddenly you can do something on a mobile phone just like so many other things you've done, taking pictures, um, you know, calculating things, uh, solving apps, playing games. Now you can do that all just on your mobile phone. And that's kind of Hello Dot in a, in a nutshell. I want to bring Pierre into the conversation. So Pierre, um, walk me through. So I understand dematerialization of payments, et cetera, but what exactly is wrong with, you know, hardware terminals? Walk us through, uh, the, you know, why that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I think we're all familiar with, with, with the evolution of these devices, right? So you remember the imprint machines, those swiping uh, card devices, clunky, big. Then they made that electronic, right? So then you had a credit card device that had a keypad, a screen, a swipe strip, and they were bulky and had an integrated printer. And all of these things were functional and great. You know, they served their purpose, but they were bulky, expensive, and complex to implement. So, you know, as a small business trying to accept card payments, it's always been a process. You've got to apply for the device. Somebody's got to install it. It's got to be trained. It's got to be maintained. You've got to have consumables like paper. I mean, how many times have you gone to pay and then the spool of the printer runs out? You get that little uh, pink strip. Yeah. <laughs> Personally, I don't know why we get receipts anymore. I, I don't like, I mean, what's the point? Like, how many trees die every year because of that, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I mean, that thermal paper is non recyclable, right? So it's yeah. terrible. So you want to obviously be more digital. You want to use electronic wherever you can. And um, so, yeah, so we've seen the evolution of these devices. The form factors change. So these days you're not seeing a big clunky device anymore that takes up half your desk. They're now quite small and elegant. So you'll be familiar with the devices that Yoko and SumUp and Square have developed. Very compact little touch pads, a keypad that you can tap on if needed, insert a card and make a payment. So they've really reduced the form factor and they've split a lot of the functionality. So now that doesn't all sit in the device. Half of it sits on your mobile phone and then it uses Bluetooth to connect to the device to do the little payment piece. So now what we've done is obviously the next evolution is move it all to the mobile device. So you don't need that extra hardware at all. So this is why you're a game changer, right? Sales maker. (laughs) <laughs> Craig, if I can bring you back into this, sure. because it seems to me like NFC is quite an important uh, technology here. Yeah. Um, and maybe <clears throat> for our viewers who are kind of going, hey, is this, is this a QR code thing, yeah. like snap scan? Yeah. Like walk us through why it's different. Yeah, absolutely, Matt. And I mean, you know, consumers will, will have experienced contactless and tap. So because tap has become so prevalent, this, this technology couldn't work without tap. You know, your phone doesn't have a slot in it for dipping your card or, or swiping, you know, but it does have an NFC reader. So like many things, this is an evolution and building on, on, on where technology is. But your consumers today, as you know, contactless and tapping is just becoming so prevalent, even in unattended things like parking meters. I mean, you know, and it drives out the lower volume tr- transactions from cash. And that's one of the big plays of SoftPaws, which is the generic term of what Halo is. We are a SoftPaws vendor, SoftPaws supplier. And it's very much running on standard card rails and card schemes, you know, which is totally ubiquitous, right, globally. It's one of those few things. And, you know, QR codes are great. They're actually still really e-commerce payments in, in, in a sense. They're not card present. Um, they're card not present. That has a different fraud rating and a different risk rating. 
So yeah, obviously we want to make clear this is not a another snap scan or or a master part. It really is is a different um, you know game entirely. Okay, so help me understand this. So this, who is this for? Is this for Matt Brown, the CEO, who wants to pay Craig some money, or is this a retail, uh, you know, merchant who sure. wants to, you know, get paid more yeah. often and in, in a more seamless way? Yeah, absolutely, Matt. I mean, it's 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 funny because all of us pay with our credit cards every day, and sometimes we don't think about who is that person we're paying. And of course, that person, that person in our terms, is a merchant or a retailer. But, you know, typically only your large retailers had speed point machines now, right? Whereas when you saw QR codes, they already dropped the barrier for acceptance of payments. You know, your small vendors, your small markets. And, of course, the Yoko's pocket passes went even further. They, their whole point was to widen card acceptance. And this is yet another bridge. So soft pass, halo, the whole point is to even lower that barrier to card acceptance, which has been relatively high, even for your SME merchant who maybe did go and buy a Yoko or a Pocket Pose. You know, now you're really saying you can do something on an ad hoc basis. Today, wake up, download the app, and accept payments from your, your friend if, if he wants to pay you in card. I mean, you'll know that when you're gambling or betting or playing golf, you can't pay your friend with a, your card, can you? But that'd be pretty cool, right? You have to EFT or find some cash. You know, I was in a situation the other day where – owed someone something, but, you know, give me your bank details. So that's why card is so great, right? You just plunk it down there. But absolutely, it's so, about making card payment a lot easier. So you lost a round of golf, basically. I did, I did, yeah. Okay, you lost a round of golf. <laughs> <laughs> and I never have and you, cash. <laughs> and you had to pay, right? Exactly. Smart move, dude. <laughs> so, Pierre, if I could bring you back into the conversation again. Security is a big deal for me, you know, um, and I think one of the closest, from what I'm hearing, guys, is, is Apple Pay. It sounds similar to yeah. kind of what, you know, in terms of a technology stack, I'm, it's obviously not the same, uh, but it sounds quite similar um, but uh, for many of our viewers, they potentially you know don't work with Apple Pay, and, and maybe they're concerned with things like fraud. I mean, like retail, and, and there's just so many sob stories about security and going wrong in merchants. You know, like yeah. was it card cloners, Stealing. or you know, you put your card in, and then suddenly you know someone's got your card details. So, Pierre, I'd love to ask you, um, how how much more secure is this? I mean, are you really solving a security problem as well for merchants? Yeah, so I mean, the hardware is is purpose built, right? So it's designed to be secure. It's, its sole purpose is to secure that card transaction. So when you tap or insert that card, type in a PIN, all of that is captured on a separate device that typically a hacker can't break into. You know, it's really hardware. It's difficult to you know exfiltrate data from hardware. So that's where we come from, right? It's all been around protecting that data. Essentially, we've moved that onto a mobile phone, and we're doing this in software. But it's not to say that you've lost the security of hardware because within your mobile device, you've got secure elements, right? So you've got things called the key store and that's used to generate secure encryption keys in hardware. So typically you'd have previously a, a terminal that would be preloaded with a key. Now your phone can dynamically generate these keys, right? So you've got that hardware capability on the device. So on your mobile phone, you can do everything that you would have had to do on the physical terminal, only now you've got this whole world of software that you can build on that that hardware base. And so, you know, the sky's the limit in terms of what you can do. And that also means hackers can do anything, right? So you've got to keep building layers and protection mechanisms to secure your software. And so that's really our focus is saying, yes, we understand that we can move this from a physical terminal onto a mobile phone, but there's so much more we need to do to protect the operating system, the app, and communications and all of that because what's more sensitive than your card pin, right? Mm. Yeah, well, my money. <laughs> <laughs> my money, damn it. <laughs> Protect my money, Halo. So, I mean, obviously, uh, this is quite an innovative technology. Uh, it certainly sounds to me that soft pause or soft point of sale is kind of where it's all going or mobile point of sale is kind of where it's all going. And we can talk about this all day long, but I'd love to maybe take this, this opportunity to kind of show uh, just at a high level, uh, you know, how the technology actually works. So I'll ask uh, Craig to do the demonstration on the phone, but Pierre, if you could maybe just talk through what's actually happening here um, and then we can have a go. So there you guys, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, so effectively you need an NFC-enabled card. So that's a starting point, right? So inside your card is an antenna that connects to the chip on the front. And so when you move that into the, force, the field of a device or a terminal, 
It powers that NFC antenna and allows communication to take place between the device and the card, right? So what Craig's done here is he's got the app loaded. It's powered the NFC on the phone, and now it's expecting a card to be tapped. So I'll bring my traditional debit credit card. I apply it to the back of the device. That has like a communication now with the, the phone and the app. It extracts the payment detail from the card and then processes that onto the bank. All right, guys. So Apple Pay is something I use all the time. Um, cool. So are you the same as Apple Pay, Craig, or not? <laughs> yeah, Matt, it's a great question. And we get asked that even from you know people that, that kind of should know the answer. And the answer is it's not. Um, Apple Pay is what the consumer uses to pay, just like you pay with your card. So Apple Pay is a tokenized version of that in your card, make it super convenient. But that's really the consumer side, the issuing side, right? We are the acceptance side. So we're taking a payment from Apple Pay. So you can actually use your Apple Pay to pay us on our Android. Wouldn't that be cool? Huh, that would be cool. Is that When's that going to be available? So that's now, right? So you can use Apple Pay to pay the Telcom Empires app or, or Pocket Pies. Um, and that's really the reverse technology. So, you know, Apple, like all things, I mean, Garmin Pay and Samsung Pay were around quite a bit before Apple Pay. But, of course, when Apple Pay arrives, everyone, everyone understands it immediately. And Apple are coming to the acceptance market with Apple Accept, but it's still a very closely guarded thing happening in the States. And today in our market, it's very Android-based, which is, which is fine. It's a huge market for, for mobile phones. And, yeah, we're very card acceptance, whereas Apple Pay is, is issuing and for the consumer. So it is an important distinction, but obviously it's very much leveraging the same piece of tech. That NFC reader that you're using on your phone is exactly the same piece of hardware we're using to create the acceptance mm. of card payment. So this is really fascinating for me. So this is a, an innovative new soft uh, pause system that you guys are basically launching into the market. In the next episode, guys, we're actually going to double down into how the technology works. So pay careful attention to that. Uh, but Craig, uh, if I could maybe just ask you, where should people go if they want to get their hands on Halo Dot? Like what should they actually sure. do at yeah. this time? Yeah, so it's an important distinction. You know, we, we are not direct to, to merchant or direct to consumers. So think of us as pe previously people bought terminals, payment terminals. So there's big vendors out there who provided hardware terminals. We're really that in software. So, so therefore, we're a lot behind your average merchant even. So we're not direct to merchant. We won't sell a solution to, you know, Joe's Kitchen Shop or KFC or anyone else. But our customers are those those customers that are merchant acquirers. So, you know, from our website, there's certainly lots of options to go on there and be directed to our partners. I um, mean, notable, notable, of course, is NetBank. Their Pocket Pause solution is powered by Halo Dots Tech at the end of the day. So Pocket Pause is a direct go-to to use SoftPause in a mobile app. And, of course, Ukeshe Empires has just launched foot with Telcom, which is uh, super interesting in that it's a wallet, very light sign-up. So those are two obvious plays, and there'll be many more coming into market. But those are certainly two that we are you know, very proud to be part of in the market today. Fantastic, guys. Thank you so much for painting a picture of the problem around, you know, hardware terminals and how, you know, the future is really being enabled with Halo Dots technology. My name is Matt Brown, guys. We'll see you in the next episode. Pay careful attention to that. We're also going to double down in episode three on Yukeshi and uh, the telecom pay opportunity for you guys. So Matt signing out. I'll see you again soon.